In this video, we're going to discuss elimination reactions of alkyl halides, introducing the general idea of an elimination reaction and digging in detail into the concerted mechanism of elimination, the E2 reaction, that occurs quite frequently in competition with the SN2 reaction under similar reaction conditions. This slide introduced the reactivity of alkyl halides. And when we first encountered alkyl halides, we noted this distinction between substitution and elimination. In a nucleophilic substitution reaction, a nucleophile displaces a leaving group. So the nucleophile donates an electron pair directly to the carbon bearing the leaving group. The leaving group gets displaced, and we get a new carbon nucleophile bond. In an elimination reaction, the anionic species, part of the reagents used, rather than donating a pair directly to the carbon linked to the leaving group, deprotonates at a carbon adjacent to the one bearing the leaving group, and the leaving group departs with formation of a new double or triple bond. So here we're showing the formation of an alkene, and the other products are the conjugate acid of that anionic species, which is now acting as a base, and the leaving group X minus. So in both cases, we see this anionic reagent species donating a pair of electrons. The difference between substitution and elimination really comes down to where that pair of electrons goes. Does it go to carbon with direct displacement of the leaving group? That's a substitution reaction. Or does it go to a beta hydrogen? In which case, we don't directly displace the leaving group, but we lose it with the formation of a new pi bond. That's going to be the focus uh, moving forward in the rest of this unit on reactions that form pi bonds via elimination where the reagent acts as a Bronsted base rather than a nucleophile. And an important conceptual point here is that nucleophiles, which we know as Lewis bases, are capable of acting as Bronsted bases as well. So when an anion, for example, acts as a nucleophile, it donates a pair of electrons to, for example, a carbon and displaces a leaving group. Very similar electron flow comes into play when a nucleophile or Bronsted base removes a proton. Notice the curved arrows are exactly the same. The only difference is where this lone pair on the nucleophile is headed. Is it headed to a hydrogen, in which case we call that nucleophile a Bronsted base? Or is it headed to some other atom, in which we, case we call this anionic species a nucleophile? So there's a deep connection here between nucleophilicity, or Lewis basicity, and Bronsted basicity. And this explains why elimination reactions are often in competition with substitutions, a point we'll return to later. For now, let's focus on the foundations of an elimination reaction. In an elimination reaction, a base removes a proton from an alkyl halide at a very specific position relative to the leaving group. If we think of X as the leaving group here, we have a carbon directly connected to the leaving group. We'll call that alpha. And we have a carbon that is the next carbon over, and we'll call that beta. Beta hydrogens are the ones eliminated in elimination reactions of alkyl halides. This is establishes a new pi bond between the alpha and beta carbons, and we lose H plus. It gets incorporated in, into the conjugate acid of the base, and X minus. This is called an elimination reaction because the elements of HX, you can think of them as H plus and X minus, are eliminated from the alkyl halide substrate. This gives an alkene in this particular case, although alkynes can also be formed through elimination reactions, as we'll see later in the course. And in terms of the questions we're interested in here, we're naturally interested in how the mechanism takes place. These curved arrows give one hypothesis. And the thing to notice about these curved arrows is there are kind of two things happening in at once if we focus on this electron flow. There's a leaving group that's departing, and there's a proton that's being removed. So we can imagine sort of stage A or part A is deprotonation of a beta CH, and part B is loss of the leaving group X. And there are different orders in which these steps can occur. They could occur at the same time, as suggested by this electron flow, or deprotonation could occur first, or loss of the leaving group could occur first. And this gives rise to three distinct classes of elimination mechanisms that we'll touch on in this unit. Now, quite frequently, we won't have just one beta carbon, right? In fact, in this substrate, we've got a beta carbon here. We also have beta carbons here and here relative to the position of the leaving group X. And so there's this question of which beta hydrogen actually gets deprotonated and which alkene is the major product. This is a question of regioselectivity, since the different alkene isomers are constitutional isomers that would form via 
pretty much conceptually similar electron flow, just occurring at different positions to give constitutional isomers. This is an issue of regioselectivity. There's also the issue of stereoselectivity in cases when we could form a cis or trans alkene. Is one favored over the other? Is the reaction stereospecific, like the SN2 reaction, or not? We'll discuss that as well. And then finally, at the end of this unit, we'll see how elimination reactions compete with nucleophilic substitutions, since the same reagents that can promote nucleophilic substitutions of alkyl halides can also promote eliminations. Due to this first bullet point, nucleophiles, or Lewis bases, can frequently also act as Bronsted bases. In terms of the mechanisms of eliminations of alkyl halides, we noted there are two things that need to happen in this reaction, deprotonation of a beta CH and loss of the leaving group X. We can imagine concerted and dissociated dissociative mechanisms for this, analogous to the concerted and dissociative substitution mechanisms we've already seen. So for example, in the concerted mechanism, deprotonation and loss of the leaving group occur all in one go. So these first two arrows essentially represent deprotonation of the beta CH. Rather than landing those electrons on carbon though, we keep them going to form the pi bond between the alpha and beta carbons here. At the same time, the CX bond breaks toward X, indicating loss of a leaving group. This concerted mechanism is known as E2, for reasons we'll touch on very shortly, and it is concerted in that both of these things are happening at the same time. It's also possible to imagine the leaving group leaving before deprotonation occurs. This is a stepwise dissociative mechanism called E1. And in an E1 mechanism, loss of the leaving group X occurs first, followed in a separate elementary step by deprotonation of the beta CH. And in fact, for reasons we'll touch on, this beta CH becomes much, much more acidic after loss of the leaving group and formation of a carbocation right here. As in the SN1 reaction, a carbocation intermediate is involved in the E1 reaction and is absolutely key to things like the rate and regioselectivity of the reaction. Now there's a third possibility here for the mechanism of elimination, and it involves a stepwise pathway in which deprotonation, A, occurs before loss of the leaving group, B. This is observed in some contexts, and it's known as E1CB. However, alkyl halides do not engage in E1CB eliminations, and so we're not going to touch on them here. You will touch on them in organic chemistry too, in a very specific context where E1CB is the norm. So stay tuned for that. For now, we're going to focus on the E2 and E1 mechanisms, which are typical of alkyl halides. When many alkyl halides, particularly highly substituted, sterically bulky alkyl halides, are treated with strong bases like hydroxide OH-, alkoxides OR-, and even stronger bases like nitrogen and carbon anions, the alkyl halide and base both appear in the rate equation to first order, so that the reaction is second order overall. The reaction rate depends on both the concentration of alkyl halide to the first power and the concentration of base to the first power. This is a bimolecular reaction then, right? In the rate determining transition state, both the alkyl halide and the base are involved. This points to a concerted mechanism that we call E2, where the 2 comes from this bimolecular kinetics that we observe, the overall kinetic order of 2 for the reaction. And this points to a concerted mechanism right, in which the base is removing a beta proton at the same time as the leaving group is departing. And so we can label this step as E2. It is one of the 10 most common elementary steps of polar organic reaction mechanisms. We can also think of this as proton transfer at the beta carbon occurring simultaneously with loss of a leaving group from the alpha carbon. And keep in mind these naming conventions. The alpha carbon is the one directly connected to the leaving group. That would be this one in this particular example. And the beta carbon is just one carbon away. And the beta carbon is going to be the one that has the hydrogen that is removed, or the proton that's removed, to establish the new carbon-carbon pi bond in an elimination reaction. The strong bases listed at the top of this slide, hydroxide and alkoxides, for example, we've already seen these acting as nucleophiles in SN2 reactions. So this may raise the question in your mind, when do these anionic species act as Bronsted bases 
and react in E2 elimination as opposed to SN2 substitution. The next slide has the answer. This depends on the substitution pattern of the alkyl halide and specifically how sterically bulky it is. Secondary and tertiary alkyl halides undergo relatively rapid E2 eliminations and react slowly in SN2 because of the steric bulk around the alpha carbon, around the carbon that would have to accept the electron pair in an SN2 substitution. So for example, if we think about a tert butyl halide, something like this, for hydroxide to function as a nucleophile, it would have to get through all the steric bulk associated with these three methyl groups. On the other hand, elimination doesn't have quite as strict a steric requirement. Notice that this hydrogen is quite a bit less hindered than the electrophilic carbon in this tertiary alkyl halide substrate. And so it's much easier to abstract a beta proton than it is for the oxygen to form a bond directly to carbon, which would lead to SN2 substitution. So for secondary and tertiary alkyl halides with these strong bases, hydroxide, alkoxides, amide bases containing negatively charged nitrogen, elimination is, is very typical. Primary alkyl halides, as a rule, generally react more rapidly in SN2 than E2 as long as the nucleophile is unhindered, as long as the nucleophile doesn't have some steric bulk associated with it. So for example, if we take quite an unhindered nucleophile in methoxide and treat it with a primary alkyl halide, CH2 group right here, at the carbon bearing the uh, leaving group, the major product here is the SN2 product, the ether. And this reaction is selective for nucleophilic substitution. We may see a little bit of elimination, assuming there are beta hydrogens built into this R group, but the major product is more often than not the SN2 substitution product here.